and gentlemen, we now present George Edwards in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Gretel, Gretel, can you hear me? Yes. I'm going to lash you to my back with this rope and try and climb up the side of the ravine. No, it isn't possible. Better leave me here and go for help. No, if you can stand the pain, I'll get to the top all right. How does the leg feel now? It hurts. I know it does. But it's our only chance, Gretel. The ice and snow is likely to start and move again at any minute. And with this wind blowing... I know, I know. So will you be a brave girl? It isn't any use. You can't do it with me. You will fall. That will be the end for both of us. Be it far better that I stay here and you go for help. No. If you stay, I stay, Gretel. It's my fault that you're here. Whatever happens, I'll share it with you. A little while ago, I was afraid of you. You thought I meant to do you some harm, wasn't that it? Yes. Perhaps you were right, Gretel. But since our accident... Since that great wall of snow came down the mountain and swept us into this ravine, you've been so good, so wonderful. What else could I do? You never wanted to come up here. If it wasn't for me, you'd be safe in your village. The village? Will we ever see it again? And France? What will France do if I don't come back? You'll go back. I'll carry you up the side of this ravine. I'll take you back to your village and put you in the arms of your sweetheart. Or I'll die in the attempt. Now, come. Don't let's waste any time. I've got plenty of rope and plenty of strength. Now, are you ready? Yes. Good. There's still some brandy in this flask. You drink it down. And remember, if I hurt you, it's because I can't help it. Won't you have some, too? No, I'm better without it. I want you to sit up. Put your arms around my neck. Then I'll tie you to me with a rope. Now, are you ready? Yes. Steady now. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> How's the pain? It's all right. You're a brave girl, Gretel. We learn to be hardy in the mountains. You'll be the mother of splendid sons one day, Gretel. That seems far away now. Oh, nonsense. It's only the distance from where we are now to the top of the ravine. Well, perhaps 300 feet. Just that little distance between us and life, between you and Franz, and your wedding next week. We're not going to admit we can't fight our way up that far, are we? Yeah, Dr. Jacob, I said I was afraid of you. It was because... I feared I might love you. Don't say that, Gretel. Since we have been through this night together, I know I will love you. Always. But without fear. It is the kind of love that is without evil. That is good and big. And makes us feel close to God. Before, I would have feared to tell Franz about you. Now, if ever I see him again, I will tell him everything. And we will both remember you always with love and gratitude. Oh, please. Please don't go on. If only you knew how, how little I deserve it. If you only knew what was in my heart when I came to Coravina. We in Coravina are far away from the world. We don't know the way that others live and think and feel. But we do know good from bad. And I know whatever may have been in your heart when you first came, it is no longer there. You're right, Gretel. These hours spent on the mountain with death so close to us, just the two of us on the edge of eternity, have cleansed me as nothing in this world has ever done before. That's why I feel I can climb that perilous ravine. I feel strong. I feel that a new life has begun for me. This can't be the end. Then let us go. You will need your strength. Oh, Lord. You take Carl and Friedel and follow the rest far. Dr. Lanyon and I will take the north side. If you find them, sound your horn. You understand? Yes, yeah, sir. And if we don't, we'll return to the village when it gets dark. Good luck. Good luck. Come here, Doctor. How much more daylight have we got? About four hours. The twilight lasts a long time, even after the sunset. Oh, hadn't you better have something to eat? You haven't stopped for a minute since we left. Oh, but I am not hungry. Look here, that's all very well. But you'll keep going much longer if you do have a bite of something. 
We may be searching for a long time yet. Till we find them. I'll search till I find out. If it takes weeks, then sit down for a few minutes and have some of these sandwiches and a drink of coffee. Come on, now there's no sense in killing yourself like this. Oh, it seems so slow, so helpless. This climbing over ice and snow. They might be anywhere of a thousand places. We might pass right over their heads and not know it. And we might suddenly top a rise and see them right in front of us. You be sensible and have something to eat. I'll come up onto that rock and have a good look around through the binoculars. Uh, perhaps you are right. That's right. Now have a good tuck in. I'm sick of having the darn things anyhow. I say the visibility is much better than it's been for hours. Those clouds have left it. I can see right across to the other slope. I can see Jan and Pertz and the others quite clearly. They're using snowshoes. We'll have to use ours when we get up a bit higher. Lucky I had these glasses with me. I can see for miles. Oh, wait a minute. Where, where is the matter? I can see something. What? Where? Right across from the other side. It's moving. Let me see. What is it? Wait a second. I get the focus properly. Yes, there it is. By heaven, I believe it's them. It's a man with something on his back. He struck me across the snow. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Here, well, then. Have you got it? Ah, oh, yeah, I see it. You are right. It's the doctor. And he is carrying Gretel. They are safe. They are alive. They are alive. <laughs> I told you so. Didn't I say Henry would make it? You don't know, Henry. He'd get out of anything. So what do we do? Sound the horn. It is the signal. Rudy and our orders aren't far away. Then we'll get across to them. It'll take about an hour, but we'll let them know we've seen them, and that will give them heart. Well sounded, man. Blast your lungs out, and let's get going. Hugh, you old rascal, I want a full and detailed explanation as to why you came out here to see me. Are you sure you're feeling all right? Of course I am. A good night's rest and one of Frau Schanks's breakfast under my belt and, well, I feel ready to tackle it all over again. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, how is Gretel? Oh, she's all right. I gave her some morphia a while ago, but it's a simple fracture. She'll be none the worse in a few weeks. You were both remarkably lucky. We certainly were. If that ridge we were on had happened to be a few feet narrower... Well, I'd not have been sitting here in the sun with oh, you. Uh, now let's talk of that. No, let's talk about why you're here. You got me thoroughly curious. How did you know where I was? Hetty Wilson told me. Hetty Wilson? Yes. But where did you see her? I went to that address you gave me. What address? Edward Hyde's house. You what? By heaven, Hugh, you had no right to do that. I gave it to you in the strictest confidence on the understanding that you'd never reveal that you knew it except under the greatest emergency. I didn't reveal it. Nobody knows it but myself. And there was an emergency, Henry. The greatest emergency. Why, what do you mean? Has something happened? Yes. What is it? Tell me quickly. Your father, old chap. My father... He's dead. Yes. Tell me about it. A stroke. He barely regained consciousness. It's only a matter of a few hours and and then the, the end. Why didn't you let me know before? You left no address. That's why I went to Hyde's place. I thought perhaps he might know. I see. Did Hetty tell you anything else? Beyond where I was. She thought Hyde had gone with you. Is that all? She talked about him a bit. I gathered he's not very popular. No, he wouldn't be. Did she say anything about... about me? She seemed pretty bitter on that score, too. Yes, I suppose she is. But why do I think about these things when... when he is dead... Without my knowing, without me being there. You couldn't have done anything, old chap. But he would have liked me to be there. We were very close. Always. Yes, I... I know that. That's why I came out to tell you. I... I couldn't bear it to come just by letter or telegram somehow. Thanks, you. I... I appreciate it. You're a very good friend. The best I've got now. Well, what will you do? Go back right away? 
Oh, I suppose so. That's why I can't quite see that there's nothing to be done, and London's a dreary place to feel sad in. I think it might seem a little odd if you didn't. There's bound to be a lot involved with the estate. Ah, yes. The estate. Our good friend Mr. Utterson will be busy in that direction, I suppose. All right. I'll go back and wear black clothes and a somber look and sign on the dotted line like a respectable member of society. Oh, Dr. Jekyll, did I disturb you? No, France, what is it? How about you wearing next week? Gretel will not be well enough, I think. Why not? She won't be able to walk down the aisle of the little church as you'd planned, but the priest can marry you at her bedside if you like. Oh, it, it would not be too much. I don't think so. A broken leg is not so serious that you need put off your wedding. Oh, thank you, thank you, Herr Doctor. We were so afraid. It is so unlucky to put off a wedding. Yes, of course it is. Uh, don't do it on any account. I'm going to be married, too, almost as soon as I get back to London. I'm not going to put it off for anything. Uh, why, what's the matter, Hugh? Why are you looking like that? Why, well, well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Addison came with me as far as Paris to see Margaret. Yes? Well, what about it? He thought that under the circumstances, it would be as well to postpone things for a while. You mean my wedding to Margaret? Yes. As a matter of fact, I think he's cancelled some of the arrangements already. What, without consulting me? By heaven, this is too much. But surely you must... I've been waiting for Margaret for years. He's put me off again and again, and I'll not stand for it. Nothing and no one shall keep her from me. If that old man tries to do it, I... it'll be the worst Can for me, old man, take a pull. You're unstrung. You've had a bad time. The accident, the news of your father's death, and now this. Oh, haven't I lost enough? I can't do without her. I can't. She's the most beautiful and the most wonderful thing I've got left in life. How can I live without her? <laughs> 